Okay, so we are going to look at the subtotal feature in Microsoft Excel. Now the subtotal allows us to categorize or group data in such a way that we can see certain um, information. For example, if I would like to show how much money each person made, each sales rep made for the round two at sales in 2020, I'm going to use a subtotal feature to do that. I have to sort everything according to the sales rep name. Now, I've already done this, but I'm going to do it again just so that you know that you have to do this when you get your file. So I go to my first option here, which is code. That's in my table. There's my heading code. Sort, okay, data, sort. And I'm sorting it by sales rep, cell values A to Z. A to Z. So that sorts it alphabetically according to the sales rep name. And you can see A, B, C, D, E. All right, cool. That was very important. Your subtotal will not work if you haven't sorted the data first according to what you're going to be doing your totals on. So let me show you what we do next. Next is I go to my outline group and I choose subtotal. At each change in, fortunately it's on sales rep, it might have been on something else, but if it's anything else you go to sales rep because that's what we sorted on, remember? We sorted by sales rep. So at each change in sales rep, we are going to use what function? Well, I want to add up. I want to total something. So I'm going to use the sum function and add the subtotal to what? And you can see I've got, what am I actually going to be adding? Well, I'm going to add the amount. That's the figure right over there, column H. I want the amount. So I'm going to use the sum function to add up whatever is in column H and show me the subtotals. I click on OK. Bam, there we go. So let me just move this out of the way there. Great, have a look at this. So I've got all the sales reps sorted from A to Z. And at the bottom of each sales rep, I have another row automatically generated, which has the person's name and it says total. And if I follow along, I can see the amount. It's actually gone and given me a subtotal of that person's sales. That's pretty good. But now you're wondering, what is this up on the top left of my screen? So I've got one, two, and three. Well, let's have a look. Best way to find out is just click on stuff. So number one, you click, it just collapses everything, and it shows you a grand total amount, which is pretty useless if you want to know about the sales reps. So we're going to go to number two. Click on number two. Now that's a little bit better. All right, number two shows me just the sales reps and the subtotal of the amount, like we said, the sum of the amount. And we're grouping it according to the sales rep. So have a look. That's very, very handy. Number three was the default view. And there you can see we can then scroll down and at the bottom of every single person is their totals. That's the first type of subtotal feature that we can use. I'm going to show you the next one, which is called the month average. Month average. So I want to work out, okay, uh, how much money on average, did I make in sales per month? So because it's per month, I need to sort this by month. So let's do that. Okay, I'm going to go click on data and sort. Sort by a month. A to Z is good. And click OK. And now we're ready to do our subtotal. So back to the top here where I have start my table. Data. Go to the outline section. Subtotal. Right. At each change in... Well, not code, each change in a month, because that's what I sorted on. Use the following function, okay? Sum, count, average, average. We want to work out the average amount per month. Great. And where are we going to add this subtotal? Where is the average per month going to be calculated? Well, that's the amount. That's the amount as well. I want to know the average amount every month. Click OK. And there we go. We can see, right, so for the month of April, Worst I made that much. So remember number two, if we just collapse it to a second level here, that shows me every single month the average amount per month. And there you can see the September average. Oh, sorry, the grand average down at the bottom over there. That's pretty cool. Let's do the last one, a counting feature, all right, as part of my subtotal. So I want to count uh, the number of, let's see, hmm, the number of times an area was covered. 
okay, an, or an area was visited, an area being Pretoria, Cape Town, Nelspruit, and all the rest. So what do I do first? I want to work with area, so I need to sort all of my data according to area. So let's do that, data and sort. Go ahead and choose sort by area, click OK, done. Right, alphabetical, beautiful. Now it's time to do the subtotal data, outline, subtotal, right at each change in area so every time it changes in area what do i want to do well i want to count okay so i'm going to use the count function and i'm going to add it to the area because i'm just counting i'm not i'm not you know adding things or subtracting things or anything like that i'm just counting how many times so i'm going to add that to area let's see what that does let's see what that does click ok ok so here you can see it's counted the number of cape towns counted the number of Durban so back to number two which is my favorite view and just go there beautiful Cape Town 10 Durban 8 Johannesburg 16 and that is pretty much what the subtotal feature is all about so you can then make sure that you sort first sort your data first then apply the subtotal and you can see the sort of information that we can gather from the subtotal feature is actually very powerful.